Hi guys and welcome to another Chinese food adventure. Today we are at Haymarket at Sydney Chinatown and we're going to be delving deep into one of China's most beloved cuisines today and that is of course Sichuanese food. You guys actually have been to Sichuan province. You went to Chengdu as a yep. part of your like group tour, right? Yeah. We did, we did. Oh, and you did the, the pandas. Yes! I, I had a panda, I had a baby panda oh, on my lap. That's, that's and it was the yeah. unbelievable experience. So you guys might not know this, but Chengdu is actually one of the food capitals of China. It's a foodie capital. UNESCO actually named it a city of gastronomy, um, I think about 10 years ago. So wow, it is super that. famous wow. for its food. Did you try some traditional dishes when we you were did. there? We had some mapa, what's it called, mapa tofu. Mapa tofu, mapa yeah. Dofu. We had that and we had some other dish that looked like it was full of green beans, but it was actually full of green chilies. Green chilies. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that um, was we learned fun. that. that. We learned that the hard way. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's one of those foods that you learn your lesson twice. <laughs> What do you First, mean? Well, you learn your lesson when you eat it, and then the when, next day. The next day, yeah. Oh, I just had a mouth numbing sensation. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, which yeah. was different. Yeah, yeah, hot, yeah. and then you were numb. Yeah. 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 So Sichuanese food isn't only spicy; it's also mouth numbing. And the reason behind that are, are these things here, these babies. These are hua jiao, uh, Sichuan peppercorns. And you're not the biggest fan of them, are you? Every time I put them in something that we eat at yeah. home, Dad's like, "No, yeah. why is this?" making my mouth numb. Here we are, they're little things. Fun fact, they're actually part of the citrus family. And uh, yeah, its purpose in life is to make your mouth tingle. So here's one for you, here's one for you. So we're gonna put them in our mouths. They smell lovely. They do. So just nibble it, don't nibble. swallow it, just don't nibble. Talk. And then watch the flavor of your tongue. And you can take it out at some point. Oh, these ones aren't super numbing, but I can only just feel it. Yeah, can you feel yeah, the numbingness? Yeah, feel it now. I can, can feel it on the tongue. You can. Yeah. It's just a delay. It's a delay. It's a delay it. Yeah. These are obviously very mild. Um, in Australia, we only have the packaged ones. Whereas in China, you can go to a spice market and get like a massive amount. And when you try those, your whole mouth goes crazy. You right there, Dad? I love to try that. You can feel it now? <laughs> do you wipe it off? Or? How do you stop it? Is it like an antidote? It's, there's so much more to Sichuanese cooking than just being spicy. For me, Sichuan food is all about strong, bold, rich, umami flavors that really, it's like a whirlwind in your mouth and you really have to experience it to understand it. So today, guess what we're eating? Ooh, wouldn't be Sichuan oh, food. Sichuan food? food? Oh, yeah. Maybe? You guessed okay. it. Today, we're gonna be trying five life-changing, fabulous, must-try Sichuan dishes. This is gonna be so life-changing, so good. I, like I just wanna put it out there too. They're not my fingers behind Amy doing that. Oh yeah, that's just that's a tree. A tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just in case. I just noticed that. <laughs> I do. Oh, this is funny. Look at that. Look at the I think they're warming this. Think you want this spicy? Yes. So I'm not even gonna give the menu to you guys today. I know exactly what I'm gonna order. I've been preparing for this for a while. So you can take off your glasses, um, let your eyes have a rest while I do all the hard work for us. Everything looks very pretty and red in there. Oh yes, yes look, everything's very red. <laughs> <laughs> look how red everything is. <laughs> Would you like some chicken with your chili? <laughs> Bit of thing you gave me outside, it's still burning. <laughs> you can still feel the Sichuan peppercorn from outside. Oh, you are yeah. such a lightweight. How was that even possible? That was like 10 minutes ago. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> oh, wait. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Ganbei. 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 You don't want to ganbei this. Ganbei means clear your drink, it means oh. skull. Oh, well, no, so, no, no ganbei. No so ganbei. Say cheers, like a, is there cheers. a word? Or? Well, yeah, I guess gumbay, but I guess in China the way they drink is a little bit differently. Usually in China you'd get your beer and you'd pour it into a little glass and then you'd cheers oh, with that. And then you'd so it's actually okay. quite rare to just drink straight out of the bottle in China. So I got a little intense there and I just wanted to come on here and clarify. If you're in China and you want to convey a more natural cheers tone and just sip it, you can still use the words gumbay. People are still going to understand you. You're not you're not gonna have to scull your drink. Um, so <laughs> just wanted to clear that up. Um, but if you do wanna make it a bit more clear to your drinking partner that you want either yourself or your drinking partner to scull their drink, you can add a subject to that gumbe phrase. For example, well, ganla, I'll scull it, or ni ganla, you scull it. And you know, things can 
progress from there. Um, there is another phrase you can use to convey that more casual cheers tone, and that is Peng Bei, but it's not so common. Um, little, I haven't really heard it used that many times. And there's even another one that's even less commonly used, and it's very, very formal, and that's Zhu uh, Jiu. I think I got the tones right on that. But anyway, um, <laughs> I'm very interested in the intricacies of Chinese drinking culture and I'm really wanting to learn more about it. Obviously, I am no expert. So if you know anything interesting and cool about Chinese drinking etiquette, please comment down below. I would absolutely love to make a video about the topic one day. Thank you. And um, also in China, you don't just drink whenever you want to drink. I found that that's actually quite rude. What you want to do is if you want to have a drink, a sip, you have to cheer someone and you drink together. So sometimes I'll go to a restaurant, I'll have a beer and I'm just like, you know, having a sip and they're like, what? Come on, let's drink together. So every time you want to have a sip, you must uh, give us a cheers. Oh, well, cheers. here's cheers to two beautiful women. Oh. And, and one that's left at home, but I brought her with me. Do you want to see? Uh, you're talking about Becca, I assume. Hmm. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. You've got socks with Rick's oh. face on it. Oh, that's so cute. Back, back on my socks. Stand our up. first dish. Oh, here we go. This is our first dish. It's called Futi Fei Pian, which translates to husband and wife lung slices. But don't worry, there's no lung in this. <laughs> there's no lung in this. Okay. But from memory, it's, uh, it's a tribe, heart, tendon, and tongue. You love to do this, don't you? <laughs> but no lung in this, no lung. It's customary in China with a lot of cuisines, with most of the cuisines, to also order some cold dishes, and they usually come before all of the other dishes. So this is the first one that's come out today. It is a cold dish. And don't worry, because the sauce is very strong. You're not going to taste anything underneath that sauce. It's very bold, and also it's all about texture. So try your best just to enjoy the different textures going on there. You know, that springiness of the tripe and the... the the chewiness of the tongue. You, you know what I'm saying? Enjoy. You're it's not, a, it's you're an not experience. Smelling it. You're really not smelling <laughs> it. I'm scared. It's gonna be really nice. How about you get a piece of tripe there, Dad? I don't want a piece oh, of tripe. Oh, come on! Is that, how do you know this tripe? It looks like tripe. That might actually just be normal beef. I think there are also just some normal yeah. beef slices in there as well. So, <laughs> so, so Dad, you have the tripe, and Mum, you can have, have, some, have some meat. Yeah, yeah. some meat. Oh. Popcorn. Popcorn? A little bit. Oh, I love that sauce so much. That sauce is so good. Mm -hmm. Is that tongue? It might that's be. Okay, that's definitely tripe. What's that? Tripe? That's gotta be tripe. Get it in your home. Okay, that's my bite. Go, Mum. Oh, it's a big tripe. Oh, I'm going big for piece of tripe. Yeah. Big bit of guts in your guts. Mm. Uh, can, are you able to get over the fact that you're eating, you know, bits of insides? Enough to realize that it's a really nice dish. Um, it's really tasty. Oh, it is. It's really challenging is. for me. I didn't grow up. What if you close your eyes? But it's the, the idea of it. Of it. It's only the idea that's challenging, John. Oh, yeah, look at that. It's good, huh? Yeah? Yeah, I taste. Think of rainbows and butterflies. And unicorns. Yeah. yeah. That's our cold dish for today. Okay. Let's wait for our other hot dishes to arrive. Excited. Hey, Dad, try your chopsticks, girls. Can you pick up a peanut from the bowl using your chopsticks? Ah. Oh, ah. first try. The rest of our mains have come. They look absolutely incredible. The first one I want my parents to dig into is this one here. Um, it's called Shui Zhu Yu, and it literally translates to water boiled fish. Oh, that smells really good. I don't know that what it is, but it smells good. Those amazing. peppers, you gave me a little pepper outside, oh, wow. a little tiny one. And look at the size of this. Look how many there are. So basically how they make this dish is they put all of the chilies and the Sichuan peppercorns on top and then they pour hot oil over it so it bubbles so you can still see it bubbling and it's delicious. Wow. Let's try the oh. fish okay. um, because this is bubbling right now. I don't want it to get yeah. too cold. So you don't eat the chilies, so you don't eat that. You, you can avoid the chilies. Okay. Avoid so that, that would be to knock your head off. Look, it's really up to you. I know that you're not very good with spice, so I'd say don't eat Probably the chilies. Oh, oh wow. Oh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. That is really, really Isn't good. it the most delicate piece of fish that you've like ever that's had? Oil fish. Oil fish. So when you said oil fish, I thought we were having it was gonna be this is so You'll start to feel that 
buzz in your mouth, you'll start to feel the Sichuan pepper consume. But it's really subtle. It is. It doesn't smack you in the face. It's That's the thing. It's a uh, Sichuan food oh, should be so all about balance. It shouldn't be so hot that you can't enjoy the flavor of the dish. So I think that Shui Zhu Yu is a perfect example of that. It, you get the flavor of the chili, you get the flavor of the Sichuan peppercorn, but you can also really enjoy it. You don't need your teeth. You eat this. You, so you, nice. you, you squash it with your tongue. There's no bones. Yeah. It's soft. The, the fish is tasty. It tastes of fish, but not too strong of fish. Yep. Um, the spice is right. Not, not too spicy at all. Red one is right, though. It is nothing to be scared of. It looks scary because it's yep. got a lot of stuff in it. <laughs> it is. It does look daunting, but it really isn't. It's, yeah. it's incredible. It came out, and you guys were like, oh my oh gosh. gosh. <laughs> I think, apart from the fish that I've caught myself, <laughs> this could be the best fish. Yeah. That I've ever eaten. It's wow. so, good. so, dish number three now, uh, we're gonna go to this one in front of my me here. You guys have tried this before. Oh, I have. This is mapo tofu. It's probably the most famous mm -hmm. Chinese tofu dish ever. And it's popular for a reason. It's this amazing combination of soft tofu and the, um, the meat, ground meat. You've got um, the, the base of that flavor is from something called doba jiao. And I've actually bought a jar of it from home. Um, so I wanted to show it. It's kind of strange, but I knew we were going to be eating mapa tofu and I wanted to show you the ingredient that, which is the hero of this dish and a lot of other Sichuanese dishes. So da 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 da. This is Dou Ban Jiang. Dou Ban Jiang. Dou Ban Jiang. Yeah. Dou Ban Jiang. Dou Ban Jiang. This is fermented chili bean paste, and some people call this the sole of Sichuanese cooking um, because there's a lot of dishes that use this as the base, and the most famous of them is Ma Dou Fu. And the flavor of it is best described as like this umami hit. Oh, yeah. It's extremely savory and it yeah. gives mapo tofu its umami flavor. All right, give us some mapo tofu. Okay. Mapo tofu. Mapo. No. Mapo. 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 Tofu. Tofu. Tofu is tofu. Actually, I have a funny story. Literally translated, this dish, mapo tofu, translates to pockmarked grandmother bean curd. So mm. it's named after the founder of this dish, who was an old lady who was very pockmarked. And I'm like, even if I was an old lady and pockmarked, I would hope they would call the dish a bit something nice. Something or maybe nice. like, usable yeah. grandma or something. Ugly yeah. grandma with beautiful soul. I don't know. Talented grandma. Good cooking grandma. Yeah, but not, they've gone for old... But ugly grandma. Yeah. So pockmarked grandma, you know, her legacy to this world will always be remembered in the form of mama with awful. Um, so yeah, here you go, guys. Here we go. Enjoy. It's really good here. That takes me back to Chengdu. Because you tried it there. It really does. Really yeah. does. That is so good. I love mapa mm. I actually really like having it with rice because it's quite saucy. And I find that the rice balance it, balances mm. it out nicely, but it's really up to you. No, it doesn't. Would you like some rice? Oh, I'm loving that. Um, so this one here will be known by most of you around the world. This is probably the most famous Sichuan dish and probably the most famous Chinese dish outside of China. You've guessed it. It's Kung Pao chicken. chicken. I've never seen a Kung Pao chicken like that. Not that that looks, looks like that. It's that fantastic. Looks really that looks that's how amazing. a Kung Pao chicken should look. Um, usually when you see it in Chinese restaurants in Western countries, it's cubed uh, chicken with maybe some yeah. like cucumber in there and obviously peanuts. Um, but what makes the Sichuan dish special is you've got amazing chilies in there. You've got a sprinkle of Sichuan peppercorns. It shouldn't be dominated by the mala, the mala. numbing sensation. Mala tongue. Mala is the sensation of having that numbingness. I've got a mala tongue again. So do I. So it's a bit of a running joke in China that every foreigner loves Kung Pao chicken. And even though I'd like to think that my palate has evolved and I know a lot more about Chinese food than I once did, I still love Kung Pao chicken just as much as I did in the beginning. It's just so good. But you know what's interesting? What's interesting? When we did our first tour in China, and we had the same thing over and over again. One of them was Kung Pao chicken. Yeah. And I, was, I did not like it. I thought well, it was more like it. what we had in Australia, a sweet and sweet sour, sour yeah. chicken. And then when Amy went to restaurants and we have to order Kung Pao chicken, I'm like, I don't like Kung Pao chicken. She said, I don't think you've actually had proper Kung Pao chicken. 
and it was a revelation. What it's they, what they, they gave us to was westernized on a, versions on a, of the draw. The Kung Pao chicken you get mm. at your local Chinese takeout is not the same as the Kung Pao chicken that's on our table right now. Very, very different mm. concepts. So if you don't, maybe don't like the Kung Pao chicken at your local Chinese restaurant, do not discount it because there's a world of flavor here for you. I'm just saying mm. that the spicy is starting to get to me oh, and I'm oh. starting to no, no, I'm starting to drink more, so if I start getting stupid... It's blame it on the alcohol. I'll blame it on the alcohol. <laughs> oh, okay. Yum. That is so good. Oh. It's sweet. Oh, yes. What? You have not to love. You've got a little bit of a tinge from the Sichuan peppercorn, mm. but generally speaking, you should not feel like it overwhelms the dish. And the crunchy peanuts. Mm. Mm. This is the this is the dish that I could just sit down and eat a plate of by myself. We've had four dishes and you came in here thinking that you weren't going to be able to handle the spice. I thought it was going to be a pain. Yeah. I so, was looking forward to seeing him in pain. <laughs> That's why I really like this restaurant because it has the flavour of the spice but it doesn't compromise on taste. You can really sit and enjoy it. For our last dish today, it's definitely on the lower end of the spice scale. Oh, and, really? Yes. So this is a very interesting dish. So this one here, our last dish for the day, this is Hui Guo Rou. I found a kind of an interesting thing when I was researching this video, when I would type into Google in English, top 10 Sichuanese dishes. The top ones that would come up were always either Kung Pao Chicken or Mapu Dofu. When I typed in Chinese, in Baidu, the Chinese Google, number one dish was this dish. This is Hui Guo Rou. Um, and it translates to twice cooked pork. So that kind of gives away the cooking method. It's cooked twice. It's first boiled and then stir fried. And um, it's this delicious combination of fatty and lean pork. It's made from, I think that's the pork belly there. Um, so it looks like a very simple dish, but I actually learned that this is one of the most difficult Sichuanese foods to master. And actually people will judge a Sichuanese restaurant by the quality of their hui hui roll. So now you guys will be the judge whether this restaurant is uh, up to scratch or not. I'm gonna say it smells good. Yeah, it's really fragrant, it this dish. Good. I think you're really gonna like this one then. Oh. Mm, spot on. How amazing is that flavor, huh? You really taste the pork. Definitely. I, I would say that this pork is beautifully cooked. Um, it's not overwhelmingly fatty um, from the fatty pieces. It just melts in your mouth. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. really pork nice. belly can go pretty bad pretty quick, mm -hmm. but it's too fatty. It's really, really good. I just found it interesting that this dish, it's not even that spicy. And this is the dish that a lot of Sichuanese people would call their number one Sichuan dish. That is our uh, our fifth dish for today. I was, I was, Loving it. my spice levels aren't up to your spice levels and I was a bit nervous about that. There's nothing there that, There's nothing uh, to be scared of. Nothing yeah. to be scared of. Yeah. If and, Dad can handle it, yeah. you can handle it. These are just five of the most popular and um, famous Sichuan dishes and that's not to say that they're that there aren't other amazing Sichuan dishes, because there are. Um, I had a really hard time composing this list of five must-try dishes, um, so I've decided to have a bit of a list of notable mentions. So, some other Sichuanese dishes that are really, really fabulous that you should also go check out. Um, from on the top of my head, you have Lan Zizi. It's a really, really spicy chicken um, dish. You've got the Yu Xiang Xie Zi, which is the fish-scented eggplant, but it's not really fish. It's Interest is, and I'll do a video about that another day. You've also got dan dan mian, the very famous Sichuanese noodle dish. Dan dan mian? No, dan dan mian. Dan dan mian. It's not biang biang mian, it's different. Oh, it's, different. Okay. Yeah, also really good. I'll probably make a video about that at some point. Um, another one that's good, the, there's this uh, really amazing Sichuanese dish with beans. I've had that. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. That one is also really, really fantastic. But yeah. These are just some five must-try dishes. Um, which one are you guys going to be going back for second helpings of? <laughs> uh, all, of them, all of them. All of them. All of them. But that one's but that first. Was the best. Yeah. Oh, this is so uh, really fantastic. That was. I drive, drive somewhere to get that. Oh wow! Uh, is yeah. it the, the spiciest food of China? 
No, oh, well, it's one of them. I'd say it's definitely one of them, but you've also got our uh, Hunan food, which is not so much a numbing spice, it's like dry spice. Where's that? Hunan? Hunan Down is the middle, kind of the yeah. middle of China. How do I describe it? A bit middle of China, and um, yeah, they have really spicy food there, but not this kind of spice. It's very different. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, so thank you guys so much for joining us on this Chinese food adventure. As always, thank you parents for joining me. Oh, pleasure. I love doing this with you guys so much. And, oh, and it's so nice to hear that you guys have been enjoying it as well. So we will see you next time with another Chinese food adventure. And yeah, until then, cheerio. cheerio. Bye. Bye.